Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial, and we're on to the next lesson in our Learn Avid's Media Composer tutorial series. And you'll remember at the end of the last tutorial, we were pretty much ready to click OK and head into our Learn Media Composer project. In this tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to get into Media Composer. In this case, it's actually Avid Symphony. We're going to take a look at the interface and we're going to start talking about settings because once you first get into your MIDI Composer or Symphony project, your settings is always going to be the first place you go to. And it's very important to have a good understanding of what all these settings do because they're not only going to help you when you're in a pinch, but they're also just going to help ease the overall workflow process. Okay, short introduction, let's command tab into Avid Symphony and let's get started. Okay, and as you can see, this is pretty much where we left off at the project selection window. So what we're going to do is simply navigate over and we're going to click on OK. And what's going to happen is, is that our Learn Media Composer project is going to open. Now, in most cases, what's going to happen when you create a new project and you click OK is a bin is going to be created for you. Now, we're going to get more into bins in a little bit. But first thing I'm going to do is actually just close this bin because I want to talk about what we're actually seeing here. There's actually three main windows that we're looking at. The first window right over here is the project window. This is where you're going to organize all of your bins. This is essentially the key organizational point for your entire project. You're not only going to have all of your bins obviously stored here. You can see right now we have the bin selected. This is where we're going to come in and talk about all of our settings. We have access to all of our visual effects from in here. We can get in and adjust the format of the project that we're working on. We can take a look at some usage information and then some general information. Now, like I said, we're going to get into all of this in just a second. I'm just going to come back over here and click on my bins button. The next window we have over here is the composer window. This is media composer. And this is where we're going to do all of our dragging and dropping clips so that we can get in, mark in, mark out points and edit these clips into timelines. And of course, that is the last window that we have down here at the bottom which is simply the timeline window. Now we're obviously going to get more into the composer window and the timeline window in great detail in later tutorials. For the next couple of lessons, we're pretty much going to be focused on bins and our settings. Back over here to the project window and let's talk about the first tab that we're in right now and that is of course the bins tab. You'll see that I have a bin located right here inside the project. I'm just going to double click on it and you'll see that the bin is empty. Now obviously if I wanted to create a new bin, I can simply click on the new bin button or I can navigate up to file and say new bin. But what I want you to do is to start concentrating on shortcuts because shortcuts are really the key to speeding up your workflow and making you a really fast and efficient editor. You'll see the shortcut here on the Mac is command and N, control and N for all of my Windows friends out there. So instead of creating a new bin by just clicking on the new bin button, I'm just going to hit command and N on the keyboard. And what I want to do is start organizing these bins properly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call this bin audio. I'll call this next bin appropriately enough, clips. What I'm going to do is create another new bin, command and N. We're going to call this graphics. And last but certainly not least, we're going to create one called sequences. So let's call this sequences. And let's put it this way. If you're dealing with a very basic project, you're going to see now that I have the four bins that are essentially going to hold all of my main elements, my sequences, graphics, clips, and audio. But, you know, looking at it like this is kind of, you know, it's kind of a mess because I'm really only dealing with one window here on my iMac. And I really wish this was more organized. Well, in previous versions of Media Composer, it was actually able to be more organized because we had the ability to use super bins. Super bins were a way to get access to many bins inside of one bin interface. Well, with Media Composer 6, we now actually have a great new feature, and that is tabbed bins. What I'm going to do is just simply take sequences. I'm just going to drag it right over here into the audio bin. You'll see now the sequences bin and the audio bin are now one. I'm going to do the exact same thing with clips. I'm just going to drag it right down here and I'll do the exact same thing with graphics. So you'll see that we now have a tabbed bin that can hold every possible element that we could need to work with. You'll see a very, very handy way to work. Now, there are a couple more things that I want to talk about inside of the bins window up here in the project window. You're going to notice that we have what I always like to refer to as is a little hamburger. It's actually called a fast menu, but you'll hear me refer to it as a hamburger. Why? Well, because it actually looks like a hamburger. You got two buns and the patty in the middle. What I'm going to do is just drop that down. You're going to see that we have some more bin functions. We have the first one, open bin, or you can simply use the shortcut, command and O on the Mac, control and O on Windows. Again, new bin. 
Another great one is new folder. If I create a new folder, maybe these four bins here are all going to be part of my old project because maybe I'm revising this project. So what I can now do is by simply hitting shift on both Mac and Windows, I can take all of those bins and stick them into that folder. You see another way to get in and get even more organized than we were before. Also, let's come back up to our hamburger here. You can see that we can close the project from here. We can delete bins. So I'm just going to create a new bin here. I'm just going to call this, this bin is junk. And what I want to do is I actually want to delete this bin. So what I can do is navigate up to the hamburger or I can simply right click on that bin. You'll see that I can open the selected bins, open selected bins in one window, very handy. I can close the selected bin or in this case, much like in the hamburger dropdown, I can delete that selected bin. Now remember, by deleting that bin, it's not gone. What happens is, is that it's actually put into the trash. And I can obviously remove that bin from the trash at any time. But in this case, I think I'm just going to empty the trash. So let's just come up here. I'm just going to say empty trash. It's going to say, are you sure this is going to be permanent? Yeah, you know what? Let's get rid of it. I'm going to come back up to the hamburger and you'll see that we have a couple other options. We have the reveal file option and flat view. So this obviously begs the question, with these four bins, where do they actually live? Because inside of Final Cut Pro, for all the Final Cut Pro editors that are watching this tutorial, you're going to know that what happens inside of Final Cut Pro is that you have one project that contains all of your bins, all of everything. So if something corrupts inside that project, you're basically in big trouble because you're not going to be able to open that project and everything is going to be in there and you're going to lose everything. Not the case inside of Media Composer. What I'm going to do is just hit Command and S to save my project. I have all my bins here that are going to be saved. And what I'm going to do is just hide Media Composer by hitting Command and H on the keyboard. And what we're going to do is navigate over here to the Jesse drive. Of course, I'm using my Avid Projects folder because you'll remember at the Project Selection window, we chose to go with an external layout for our projects because I like to have everything you know, in one folder on an external hard drive. And you're going to see that inside the Learn Media Composer folder is not only my project settings, folder that I created as well called old project. If I double click on it, here are my bins as individual separate bins, completely irrelevant of the project. I could open a new project, take one of these bins, copy it into that project, open it up. I could take this bin, I could email it to somebody, you know, across the street, across the world. And really anybody can open this and start using it. It's a very different and much better way than it was to work inside of Final Cut Pro 7. Okay, so let me just close that. I'm just going to command tab back into Symphony here. And basically, that's the basics of creating a bin. Now, we're going to get way more into bins in a later lesson, but I do want to talk about one other thing. I said we're going to get in and start talking about our settings because, of course, that is the next tab over. And normally what I would do with settings is I'd start at the very first one. You'll see if I come into settings, I'm just going to drag the window down here a little bit. There we go. The first setting's AMA, but I figured what we would probably do instead of starting with AMA, since we were talking about bins, is maybe we'll jump down to our bin setting. What I'm going to do is simply double click on the bin setting and you're going to see in here we have some options as far as how we want our bins to work. You'll see the very first option, very important, auto save. Right now it's set to every 15 minutes. For me, because bins save so quickly, what I like to do is just set that to be every three minutes. You'll see the inactivity period for a bin right now is set to 15 seconds. That's fine. And you'll see the force auto save at 17 minutes is selected. Now, when would this come into play? Well, let's say I'd started something rendering and the render took, let's just say 18 minutes. What would happen is as soon as that render is done, Media Composer or Symphony would immediately save my project. A great, great backup for you to have. And I highly suggest you turning it on and even setting that to something like maybe force save every 10 minutes, something a little bit lower. So that way you know that everything is always being backed up. Now here's a big one, maximum files inside a project's attic. What exactly is the attic? Well, remember, we're working with bins. Bins are always being saved, but guess what? Bins are also always being backed up as well. So you're always going to have a backup of your bins. Now, remember, I'm using an external drive to save my project. So I'm going to want to make sure that the attic is somewhere else other than that external drive. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide Symphony. We're going to navigate up to my Lion hard drive. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down into users and I'm going to select not my user, Kevin P. McAuliffe. I'm actually going to select shared. You're going to see in there that we have a folder called Avid Symphony. And inside of Avid Symphony, I have a folder called, appropriately enough, the Avid Attic. I'm going to double click on that and you're going to see that I have a folder called Learn Media Composer. I also have another folder called Bins. 
and you're going to see that there are the bins that I've created, even though this bin is junk, this folder. And if you navigate back up to the clips folder and we drop that down, you're going to see that we have a backup of that bin already saved in here. And depending on how long we've had the project open, you're going to see that we might have multiple bins. This is a great way if a client says, oh, you know what, I really wish we could go back and see what we did yesterday. You know what, I'd already saved it, but tell you what, I'm going to go into the attic and I'm going to pull out an old version of the project. I'll open it up and we can take a look at it. A fantastic way to work. Okay, so let me just command tab back into Symphony here. I'm just going to come back into my bin settings here. You're going to see that the maximum files inside of a project's attic is, in this case, a thousand. You can set that to be whatever you want. You got to remember, unless you're working on huge projects, these bins are going to be very small. And the maximum versions of a file in the attic is set to 50. Double clicking on an object loads it into the source or record monitor, or you can have it pop up in a new monitor. You know what? We're going to leave it as source or record monitor because that's just sort of the standard way to work inside a media composer. And you can see, last but certainly not least, we can enable an edit directly from a bin using a splice or overwrite. What I'm going to do is simply say OK, and that is basically a basic look at bins and the settings that go along with bins. Now in the next lesson, we're going to get in and we're going to start taking a look at all of the individual settings inside of the settings window. And like I said earlier, you're going to see how these settings are really not only going to help you get started, but they're really going to save your bacon if you get into trouble. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.